Uh, Dr. Luong's been involved with um, helping build one of the first digital banks in the world, WeBank, and now works as VP uh, of uh, financial services institutions at Solus. Uh, good morning. Hey, uh, Aiken. Hi. Hi, Mark. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Great to have you here. Are you able to uh, share your screen, uh, share your slide deck now? Can you see my screen? Perfect. Okay, I'm going to jump off and leave you to it. Okay, cool. Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Aiken, and uh, I'd like to share my experience in building uh, one of the best uh, or one of the earliest, or in fact, right now, kind of the largest digital bank in the world. And, uh, you know, some of the innovations they have is really impressive. So I'd like to share with you here. And to start with, I'd like to, you know, put a problem statement uh, together. So, so happened when I visited the API Days uh, website, the first paragraph, you know, looks like a very appropriate problem statement. So basically saying a very centralized hierarchy and business model and IT system, in the current banking uh, world, actually stopping the innovation, stopping the uh, the whole digital transformation to be more agile and, and user experience centric. So. That's exactly the problem statement, and I'm going to share with you here the innovation uh, we have, uh, you know, in this uh, banking uh, uh, design platform design. And there are lots of innovations around for the past few years, right? You know, you got AI, machine learning, uh, blockchains, but the, uh, the I'm going to talk about three very basic elements of uh, you know architecture elements of innovation today. So, you know, being distributed and using your event mesh and also the the point about event portal so i'm going to one by one go through it so it's not much time we have today so feel free to contact me directly uh, afterwards for all the details so first of all the distribute architecture and uh, is a very general term i mean of course you know uh, distributed versus centralized centralized to me uh, from a banking perspective to me it's more about centralize your customer accounts into one place Right, so you got one big database containing all your bank accounts. You know, could be one million, could be twenty million, could be two hundred million, right? And then that is could be you know like most banks nowadays, digital or not, they actually all having similar kind of uh, you know centralized model, right? Doesn't matter whether you use distributed uh, paths like distributed database or distributed storage. At the end of the day, you still got a one you know lump of record containing all the customer. Uh, records and then you have your business operations uh, over that. Mm -hmm. So another approach to look at it is, can we actually divide that customer accounts into smaller portions, more manageable, more scalable in terms of like, uh, you know, like horizontal scale. And uh, so make it a, as a, a, a connected nodes, uh, I call it here. So each node itself is a portion of customers. So if you've got a 10 million, account a bank, you could have like 1 million per node, let's say, right? And then each node is a self-contained fully functional bank. So it's a small bank, right? And all those small banks are actually interconnected and operating, you know, um, seamlessly, uh, very similar to the real world physical branches uh, in that sense, right? And to me, this is more truly kind of distributed than the, uh, than the other model. But, you know, I'll talk a bit more about the pros and cons uh, later on. But then you look at the, the distributed environment. It's actually very hard to do. I think probably that's one of the reasons, right? And it's very complicated, as you see here. There's so many environments you have to kind of uh, cope with nowadays. You know, different cloud environments, private, public, different brands of cloud. And then, you know, for digital banks, you know, brand new digital banks, challenge banks, probably easier because, you know, they, you saw everything from, from um you know from clouds and for traditional banks they have to worry about the whole bunch of legacy systems and all the customer records in uh, in mainframe for example they need to share with their kind of new own digital banking platform is a bit of hustle you know you've got layers of uh, adapters and bridges that you have to go through and of course a new coming uh, you know, a whole bunch of like, uh, you know, non-banking application also wants to be integrated with the banks, you know, from, from uh, you know, via the iPass channel, maybe in cloud. So linking the whole kind of SaaS offering like SAP systems, Salesforce and all kinds, right? And all those environment, 
together with the new uh, generation of IoT devices, connected cars, connected you know uh, 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 houses like uh, smart buildings, and uh, yeah, uh, all those kind of IoT data also want to you know joining the uh, part of the kind of data movement within your environments. And that make the whole environment very kind of high cost to run, very high risk, you know, easy to fail. And that it, sometimes you can't tell where the, you know, where the failure, failure is. Very poor from performance because of the layer of, of uh, you know, uh, bridges, adapters and connectors, right? And then overall, very poor efficiency. And that's not very good. So what we're looking at is that, is there a layer that we can actually connect all the environments together? Right. So, and then handling all the all the connectivities, you know, performance and uh, high availability. You don't need to worry about this plumbing and concentrate on your own, you know, business logic in cloud or or, or on prem. Right. So this layer we call it the event mesh. Basically, it's just a mesh of you know event brokers together to handling all those data movement between different environments. Right. And that gives you uniform uh, connectivities and all the good stuff I mentioned here. Security governance, for example. And based on that concept, I'm going to show you here. This is probably the uh, the most important slides of uh, of this presentation. This is a truly distributed, you know, digital banking platform. So you look at these little boxes there. It, they are basically we call it the bank in the box uh, note. So each note representing certain amount of customers. So again, I use that example. You've got like a, a 10 million accounts uh, a bank. So each note can represent 1 million, right? And then when you deploy that note, the platform will be able to replicate that note into two different uh, uh, data center as you configure it, right? So you got something like by default, a one plus two redundancy model across you know three data centers. So the chance of for, for note, one note to go down, which may affect certain amount of customer, but not the whole bank is very, very low. Right. And overall for a bank to go down is is even harder. Right. Is is that's kind of a reliability you get from from this. And also once you start opt optimizing, you know, like make it more resource uh, efficient, more cost efficient for this uh, uh, bank note. And you can just replicate that note to grow your bank. Right now you got 10 million. Tomorrow you got 11 million. Just another note you deploy and replicate that. Right. And the way to put. The, the, to look at the node physically, it's just a rack of servers, you know, app, uh, web servers, app servers, database servers, but all build up in the same kind of environment. And I'll show you, you know, uh, later on the slide what's inside the node, right? But the most important things here, those nodes could be on prime, could be in cloud, it doesn't matter. And it's all get connected by this uh, uh, event mesh that we just talked about, right? So event mesh is the key element that put everything together. So if you deploy a bank in that scale, you know, like we're talking about this architecture being proven on a 200 million accounts, a digital bank that, you know, I, I used to work with before. And this is kind of architecture they have. And then you can, of course, your bank, you know, European bank, I don't know, typically 10 million, 20 million uh, uh, customer account. You can apply the same, but with the more, more kind of uh, optimized note for yourself, right? It depends on what which uh, area you stress on, you know, which business uh, logic, for example, you stress on. And the overall cost is much lower. You know, the example I gave you before, we're talking about about you know fifty cents, you know, US dollar cents, kind of uh, per account per year. So it's very uh, low compared to the traditional ones. Probably like ten times uh, or even more higher than that. Okay, and. And inside the node, I'll show you what's inside. So you see this, like, uh, uh, it's basically a very cloud native uh, design. So everything all container based. So within the node, you can put it on prime or in the cloud, doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's all uh, uh, um, cloud native. And then the API gateway is in place. So it's supposed to be kind of open API for your open banking, uh, if needed. You know, depends on your spec, a different country, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, change that. And then all the banking as a service, which is basically a, a bunch of SaaS, you can sit inside this microservice container framework and act, you know, whatever fintech purpose, or in fact, even the core banking could be just one of bunch of, uh, you know, uh, uh, microservices that sit inside this container. So it's not 
anymore, you know, like everything is all patched on to core banking system, becoming a, a banking platform. It's more about the platform is the actual, the, it's actually the core, and then all the banking services, you just sit inside that container framework, right? And again, you see the mesh is the key, actually, you know, a component inside that, uh, that node and also across nodes to connect the different uh, nodes together. Right. I mentioned a few a few times about event mesh. What is the event mesh? I mean, people understand what is like, uh, uh, you know, service mesh maybe nowadays very popular. But event mesh is starting from the kind of the events, uh, eventing world, right? So all the, uh, the 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 nowadays digital transformation we're talking about improving customer experience, you know, and it, it is about linking all those different entities, you know, places. Uh, you know, cars, hospitals, uh, in here we've got like office buildings, linking all that together and then extract all those data coming out in and out of those places or, or devices and then get, get, connect, uh, get it connected, centralized to find out, you know, there are financial transactions that you need to care for. There's other kind of, uh, you know, transactions you need to uh, look at. It's all about eventing, right, you know, among this. If you look if uh, you know if you look from a customer point of view, they have a banking app and they want to do like I want to pay my uh, uh, bills, I want to make a hospital um, appointment, I want to call a taxi, I want to you know get into the building, even use my uh, you know banking app. This is all about you know connecting with the different uh, places, devices that we just talked about in the previous slide, right? All in one place with lots of eventing happening going on here. And similar, similarly on this uh, example here is the cross-border trade finance. Again, along the whole you know life cycle of the the goods being moving around from logistic track and trace, from you know port clearance, and from you know all the um, uh, you know, custom uh, custom clearance, for example, it's all firing event, you know, uh, getting collected and trigger different financial services to act, you know, whether it's approval, whether it's to as a notification, it's all about events. So that's why, you know, the Gartner basically is saying like, oh, you know, by 2022, 70% of the new digital business will require event sourced real-time situational awareness type of platforms, right? So how do you man uh, manage real-time events flowing into your, you know, current, currently like legacy system or very kind of rigidly designed system? You need a new architecture to do that. That's why the event-driven architecture is the key here. And of course, you see that diagram, real-timeness is also very important because the more real-time you go, the more preventive or pre predictive actions you can do, right? The less real time, you may as well do the batch process, which is no different to the current days, uh, you know, lots of, you know, uh, uh, enterprise doing now, right? So event-driven architecture is the future of banking. And if you look at the kind of evolution of, of architecture, you see that, uh, you know, from the monolithic to service or oriented uh, SOA architecture with the ESB as the core, we're moving to a much more distributed because of digital environments, right? And connected places and, and devices I mentioned. You got API gateway, you know, getting all the re uh, requests coming in. And then underneath you got a service mesh that connecting all the microservices could be in different environment again, but you know, service mesh is sidecar handling all the plumbing and routing for you. But service mesh is mainly focus on the request reply type of you know interactions which are you know fair enough I mean, most of the banking application uh, sorry banking interaction is request reply but more and more you see more kind of pops up type of requests coming in or not request but you know pops up type of events coming in and thus you need a, a different type of mesh can handle this kind of interactions in the more kind of a uh, you know event-driven way, right? That's what the event mesh is for. So if you, if you summarize that, it, this is a very good diagram showing you that the two service mesh and event mesh can coexist, right? It's, in fact, they complement each other. And service mesh focus on RESTful request reply services, microservices, and event mesh focus on the more pops up event-driven type of microservices. And there's also hybrid microservices requiring both interactions to work, right? This is, you know, if you hi, uh, see the uh, the extra from Gartner, again, the branding messaging, the new, the old world of messaging is transforming into 
the new world of event mesh, and then of course service mesh also mentioned there as well. So this is all about you know changing the uh, the you know the the, the design in a way of thinking more about about events, more about actually how the world works is about service. Uh, you know, like uh, interact is more about pops up rather than request reply most of the time. And then, of course, the you know I can go as far uh, as to say because you know it happened in in in, in the ex uh, example I gave you, you know, the the largest digital bank we designed. There was no service mesh, not because it's not available. Well, it wasn't available, but it's because even in mesh, even sorry, even mesh at that layer can handle request reply as well. Just treat them as services, just a special type of pops up. But you know, you have to give me a response before I go, right? This is request reply. So event mesh can actually, you know, do a uh, lot of the what service mesh can offer as well. So just just, just a, a highlight of this uh, uh, slide here. So lastly, last portion is the event portal. So when I did the project, you know, back like six years ago when we designed this digital bank. 200 million account was the target, and now it's already achieved. So event portal, it was something like governance, you know, that we need to do. And there wasn't an event portal available. So uh, we actually put all the events in one big Excel uh, spreadsheet, right? So and anyone want to publish anything, you know, uh, any events with the schema, with the topic structure, you have to put in this, uh, this, uh, you know, this uh, Excel spreadsheet. And then from the Excel spreadsheet, we generate scripts. When the script is deployed it on the uh, on the whole event mesh environment, right? It's very cumbersome. And and as you can see, we need something like what like the API portal type of capability that we can start from discovering APIs to manage govern APIs to apply analytics, even monetizing the uh, the, the APIs uh, 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 traffic and all sorts that API portal can offer. We want it to be on the event side of it, on the event mesh to see all the events, kind of discovery, event catalog, event governance, and then also the whole analytics that we need as well, right? And then similar to API portal, we can also generate source code out of the, um, the event portal from design time and then deploy it into the real time, a uh, uh, runtime environment. You know, so the event portal actually closely connect to the event broker and event broker connected to form the event mesh. Right, so event portal can sit in anywhere, cloud or not cloud, and then listening to the, uh, you know, to the event mesh for all the activities happen there, and then also real time governing like the events, kind of you know who generates the events uh, coming from where, you know, which IP address and going to uh, from where to where and who has subscribed at what kind of rate and what kind of uh, you know uh, 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 you know message format or topic structure. So this. You know, without the event portal, the event-driven architecture could be very messy to implement, right? Because by default, they're very loosely coupled. So you don't know who's actually listening. You just care about publishing the events and you go, right? You This is like an asynchronous process, right? And suddenly you got, you got like uh, all kinds of people listening to the match and subscribe. And you want to find out who is actually subscribing what and listening about, do they have the security clearance authorization? That kind of thing you need to worry about. So this is exactly what the event portal will give you. And then if you check online, uh, you know, you can Google async API, right? This is a, a new, uh, I think it's been a few years now, uh, not that new, but you know, it's, it's a, a, a focus on, you know, a kind of, uh, along with API, which traditionally we need. And also there's an async type of uh, uh, API development where you handled all the, all the pops up event driven type of uh, uh, interactions. And async API is a framework that gives you that code generation capability together with the event portal, right? So that makes the whole event driven architecture much easier to implement, okay? So if we go to the last, yeah, pretty much the last slide now, you see, you got this kind of event portal concept, listening or tap uh, on the event mesh that you build for your distributed banking platform, could be in cloud, could be on-prime and different type of cloud, doesn't matter. And then you're just listening to that, uh, 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 governing all the kind of events streaming in and out this platform, right? This is the kind of final, uh, uh, objective of like you know building a really really cool really a uh, secure uh, robust kind of event driven uh, uh, architecture platform and on event portal you see the some of the screenshot here so 
we are the only uh, Solus is actually the only company actually producing an event portal with this kind of uh, similar to API portal kind of uh, capability to give you an environment that you know create your event driven architecture application and not like the event port the event port is just two set basically right so it's not only listening to to like uh, Solus own you know pops up plus broker but we're also listening to Kafka we can also listen to all kind of other brokers available you know for eventing mm -hmm. so basically it's a centralized place for all your event driven uh, uh, need uh, across the um, um, uh, across your enterprise right so this pretty much summarize what uh, we you know I'm trying to talk about in within this uh, kind of 20 minutes is about uh, first of all uh, being truly distributed is a very cool concept you know think about it how you actually do it this is uh, this is uh, you know compared to the very central centralized model you have a much more flexible much more scalable and kind of a cool uh, 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 environment to work with because the whole, imagine the whole uh, replication of the note is very easy. The monitoring of the note is, you know, it's all centralized because of event mesh. And then build your event mesh around your distributed environment, right? Put that kind of eventing layer in place along with your API gateway. You can provide a much, you know, a much more a versatile type of, uh, you know, uh, support for your microservices. And, uh, if, uh, and then finally, Put in an event portal. Without event portal, you are just like uh, you know in in a very uh, risky uh, situation because you don't have a very good governance for events, and events in particular require very good governance uh, around it. Okay, so I think uh, yeah, that's the final slides basically, and just one uh, comments here: Solus is free for production use. Basically, that. A broker you can download from a website and start building an event-driven architecture. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thanks, Aiken. Uh, and then do you want to uh, take off your slides? Okay. So we can have a quick chat. Sure. Um, the, <clears throat> uh, unshare your screen. Oh, yeah, there yeah. you are. Um, great. No, that was fantastic. A really uh, thorough overview of like the potential of event-based architecture and some uh, really practical examples and it looks awesome too like just those different screens the discoverability the discovery and you know all the rest it's yeah. um very engaging as a way to for engineers to have to work uh, there's quite often at api days there's engineers who come along um to these events hear talks like that are super excited about about the sort of um approaches that you're talking about how would they where would they start? So they've got to go back and they're now going to speak to their architects about what they've seen here. They're going to ref reference your talk and they'll send people to the video when it's available next week. But where would they start to try to advocate for taking this sort of approach to their architecture? Should they be drawing the map of where they are now and where they want to be? What, how, would you, how would you suggest they approach it? Yeah, I, I think it's definitely uh, uh, need to be you know, a uh, well planned, right? It's not a big bang uh, as so many things, right? So you look at your existing, you know, system, you know, how eventing uh, they are now. And then even it's not, I mean, even for example, using uh, uh, IBM mainframe, IBM MQ, you know, like uh, doing the, uh, uh, the messaging between the kind of legacy application, but then, you know, you think about, okay, let's put a, a broker in place. You know, that broker can talk to IBM MQ as well as talking to Kafka or talking to any other, you know, uh, uh, modern uh, microservice driven uh, uh, architecture. Then put that broker in place there and start to extract the data out. Then once you get those data, you know, out, you can, you know, suddenly open up a whole wide world and you can start to pick a business use case about, uh, you know, use that as a, as your pilot for your event driven architecture. And then again, you know, the broker is the core of that architecture. The, this broker connect to the IBM mainframe broker, suddenly you got the old legacy system and new system running in parallel seamlessly, you know, like two ways, you know, uh, uh, exchanging data right so that i think definitely the first step to look at that's excellent that's a really practical like yeah um where to start uh, because i'm because the it's so inspiring what you talked about like the, so people will be going back and thinking where do we uh you know how do i 
push our, our organization forward with this. And then so that's, you know, like so one, there's a sort of microservices component, the broker putting that into place. And then the other is out of that, because now you're getting the data flowing out of the system, then you can start thinking, okay, what's the business case we want to yeah. explore first? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, you know, you've got your digital banking, especially for traditional ba traditional banks moving to digital bank, you don't want your customer to input your customer data again on the app, right? You got, yeah. you, you got your customer data in the mainframe. You want to pull that out and do your KYC, you know, for them, and then, and then you know, fill it up this new digital a banking platform right this is a, a, actually a challenge you know customer onboarding uh from yeah Africa. yeah yeah okay wonderful um we're out of time and travis is waiting in the wings so we'll say thanks aiken great talk cheers yeah thank you mark yeah talk to you later.